Hey everyone, Keegan here with Dark Arrow. This video is all about flaps and the flap design on the Dark Arrow One. This aircraft uses split flaps and we recently finished installing them. I want to get into the details of this design and show how it compares to other flap configurations. There are also some myths floating around about split flaps that we hope to dispel. But let's start by just looking at the flaps on the Dark Arrow One prototype. Flaps are a removable control surface that increase the lift produced by the wing. Flaps are mainly used during takeoff and landing. They allow for slower landing speeds, steeper approaches, and they also allow us to take off from shorter runways. Although they increase lift, they also increase drag. So for the majority of the flight, they're in this retracted position, which allows for greater efficiency during cruise. Basically, the flaps allow us to have a smaller wing with less drag than what we'd otherwise need if we didn't have flaps. So as I mentioned, this aircraft uses a split flap configuration where the flap hinges from the bottom wing skin where the top wing skin remains fixed. We've briefly shown the flaps in other videos, but it wasn't until recently that we had all the flap actuation hardware installed that allows us to control them from the cockpit. So this is done with a manual flap handle that rests between the pilot and co-pilot. It's pulled up and down. We went back and forth on whether we do a manual flap or have it electrically driven, but we ended up deciding on a manual flap actuation just due to its simplicity, lightweight, and the ability to quickly implement it for the prototype. I want to get into more of the details on how we arrived on this design and some of the compromises that we had to evaluate along the way, but I'll hand it off to Riley to talk through all of that. To explain why we picked a split flap for the Dark Arrow 1, I thought it'd be good to show a couple different options of what other flap types are out there so we can see what different decisions we were looking at with our flap design. I've got a couple different common flaps drawn out on the board here. This isn't every single flap type out there, but this is probably about 90% of what you'll see in general aviation. We have the plane flap, split flap, slotted flap, and the Fowler flap. So we'll start by looking at the plane flap that's characterized by having both the top and bottom skin moving together, deflecting down as a unified control surface in the flap. And we can measure the performance of the plane flap by how much it increases our lift with the lift coefficient. We can measure the lift coefficient by running a little test wing through a wind tunnel and then measuring lift versus angle of attack. We'll get a lift puller that looks something like this. And when we drop the flaps, it'll move our lift curve up and to the left and it'll slightly modify the peak of the curve. So dropping the flaps increases our lift coefficient and what we really care about is the maximum lift coefficient of the CL max. So for a plane flap that we might put on the Dark Arrow 1, we could see a CL max of around 2.3. Not bad. The main appeal for the plane flap is just that it's simple and lightweight. And so that's why you commonly see it on a lot of these aircraft like the Vans RVs. It's found on a couple old warbirds and even modern fighter jets. The maximum lift coefficient that we get with the plane flap is somewhat limited by the geometry at the hinge line. So the air flowing over the top of the wing skin can stay attached and follow the contour for small flap deflections, anything less than about 15 or 20 degrees. But as we get into higher flap deflections past 20 degrees, the flow starts to separate and it can't follow that contour on the upper surface of the flap. So that separation somewhat limits the maximum lift coefficient that we can achieve with the plane flap. That's where the split flap performs a little bit better. The split flap only has the lower portion of the wing skin deflecting downward as we saw on the Dark Arrow 1. So because we have the top wing skin fixed, that defines somewhat of a fixed separation point for the flow. It can easily follow this top wing skin all the way to the trailing edge of the wing. So that allows the split flap to produce a little bit higher maximum lift coefficient compared to the plane flap. We want the flow to follow the airfoil and be deflected down at the trailing edge. That doesn't exactly happen with the split flap, but at least it's not going uh, crazy and turbulent and getting chaotic right at the hinge line. So that is what allows the split flap to perform a little bit better than the plane flap. Same case is true, it's simple and lightweight. And what's interesting with the split flap is that it's well suited for composite construction. We can easily build this uh, basically a flat plate for the split flap uh, with composite materials by making a sandwich type structure by sandwiching a foam core with uh, carbon fiber on both sides and that makes a really stiff rigid structure that's both uh, strong and stiff in torsion and bending which is what we need when we deflect this flap into the breeze. It's a little bit harder to make a split flap out of riveted aluminum because you have to add in a bunch of ribs and stiffeners to stiffen up the flap and the wing skin above the split flap. It's not impossible to build a split flap with riveted aluminum construction. You'd see it maybe in some of the old warbirds like the Spitfire, the P-40, and the Hawker Hurricane. Uh, but that added complexity and added part count with riveted aluminum is probably why we don't see it more commonly. But 
for the Dark Arrow 1 with carbon fiber composite construction. Split flap is great for manufacturing. Neither of these designs represents the pinnacle of what we can achieve for increasing lift with the flap design. For that, we might graduate up to some of these more involved flap designs like the slotted flap or fowler flap. Slotted flap is characterized by having an actual physical slot between the fixed portion of the wing and the flap. And that slot allows high energy air to bleed from the underside of the wing over the leading edge of the flap. And that helps the flow stay attached as the flow passes over the top wing skin and deflect downward over the flap. And that is what allows the slotted flap to achieve a little bit higher maximum lift coefficient compared to the plain flap or split flap, something around maybe 2.6 we would see. This is going to be a little bit more complexity both in the design and manufacturing because we have to put some thought into the geometry of this slot and the geometry of the leading edge of the flap and also the hinge mechanism because we want this flap to uh, deflect a little bit aft and open up the slot as we extend the flap down so that air can pass through but then we also want it to close up and close that slot we're in cruise flight so we're not getting extra drag from the slot uh, with just parasitic losses through the slot and cruise so between the geometry of the slot and the hinge mechanism, we have to put in a little bit more effort with the slotted flap design uh, because we could, in theory, design a slotted flap that works a little bit worse than a plain flap or split flap, which uh, right out the gate give us pretty decent lift increment. The added lift that we get with the slotted flap gives it more appeal for takeoff and landing, and that's why we see it pretty commonly in some of like the Cirrus or Cessna type aircraft. If we really want to up our lift coefficient, we might go to the Fowler flap, which is sort of a mashup between some of these designs. And the special thing about the Fowler flap is that the flap actually translates aft all the way to the trailing edge of the wing and then deflects down. So when the flap translates aft, that increases the wing area. That alone would increase lift, but then when we deflect the flap down as well, that further increases lift, and we might expect to see a maximum lift coefficient of something around 3.0. All these lift coefficient numbers are pretty rough. They're ballpark numbers, but I thought it'd be good to put numbers down rather than just making uh, hand-waving statements about the comparison of these lift coefficients. The Fowler flap is gonna have the highest complexity of these designs because we have to design a hinge mechanism that allows this translation to occur as well as angular deflection in the flap. And then we also have to have an actuation mechanism that can accommodate that motion. So that motion is normally accommodated with uh, linkages or tracks, and then the actuator is usually something like a ball screw. All that hardware adds weight. It's still worth it because the amount of extra lift we get definitely offsets the weight of the extra hardware, but it's just more complicated to design. This Fowler flap design is seen pretty commonly in some of the old bombers like the B-52 and B-29. I've covered how these different airfoils compare for lift. What about drag? That's where things get interesting. The split flap is gonna have the least amount of drag for a flap retracted configuration because it has the cleanest external profile. There's no seams or hinge lines on the top wing skin to trip up flow. The only sort of disturbance we have is on the lower wing skin where we have the hinge line here. Other than that, it's a very clean configuration in cruise, so it's gonna give us the lowest drag. And that's one of the reasons we picked the split flap is because it feeds into our high-speed long-range mission for the Dark Arrow 1. All these other flap types are gonna have either multiple seams or hinges hanging out in the breeze. So the plain flap, slotted flap, and follower flap are all gonna be a little bit more drag than the split flap and cruise. What about for a deflected configuration? When we drop the flaps, what does the drag look like there? So we saw there's somewhat of a hierarchy here for lift with the plain flap being at the bottom and the fowler flap being at the top for lift. That same hierarchy somewhat exists for drag but in the opposite direction with the plain flap and split flap presenting a little bit more drag than the slotted and fowler flap. If you look this up, you'll see sometimes some conflicting information between how the split flap and plain flap compare for drag. It's often stated that the split flap has more drag than the plain flap. Uh, I think that intuitively makes sense. It looks like this should have more drag because you have this separated trailing edge, almost sort of a, a wedge profile that's separating flow. And that seems like it should present more drag than the plain flap. Uh, that's not exactly the case, but this often gets misstated. Even in some of the FAA pilot training material, it says that the split flap has more drag than the plain flap. But if we measure how much drag we get for a given increment of lift, the split flap actually comes out on top of the plane flap. Now, you don't have to take my word for it on this. There's actually published, publicly available wind tunnel test reports that have compared the split flap versus the plane flap on different airfoils and shows that the split flap comes out on top for lift versus drag. So I'll leave some links to those reports in the description of this video if you wanna do some further reading 
and understand this a little bit deeper. Anyway, enough of the rant on the drag. I also want to show the mechanism or the actuator that we created to make the split flap deflect downward. We're going to cover that in the CAD world and I'll hand the discussion back off to Keegan for that. To get a better idea of how the flap mechanism works, I'm sitting over at the computer and I have the CAD model pulled up. It's a little tricky to see what's going on with everything installed in the aircraft, but we can get a much better sense of all the components involved by isolating them in the CAD world and ghosting out the things that we don't need to see. So right now I have highlighted all of the main linkages and components that are involved in actuating the flaps. As I mentioned, this is a manually operated system that's controlled with a flap handle in between the pilot and co-pilot, but how does that motion of the flap handle actually translate all the way to the flaps? So I can actually move the flap handle here with my cursor back and forth. You can maybe already tell what's going on here, but the flap handle is connected to a series of torque tube and linkages. They're all getting together and that motion translates through them all the way through the flaps. So what enables that is this main torque tube that you see here that the flap handle is connected to, and then the other components that are connected on the ends of it that help translate that motion all the way back to the flaps. Since we have a left and right flap, this all has to be connected together and they have to move in sequence. So as I move that flap handle, the torque tube rotates, moves bell cranks and linkages, and translates that all the way out to the flaps. Most of the components that you see here is a combination of machined aluminum or machined carbon and then some off-the-shelf carbon fiber tubing. There were a couple parts that we had made uh, through an additive manufacturing process. We don't have a way to additively manufacture here in-house, so we teamed up with Zometry to get these parts made out of house and they're actually the sponsor of this video. So if you've watched our channel, you probably already know a lot about Zometry, that they do manufacturing on demand where I can upload a CAD file of a part and get an instant quote and an instant lead time for that part. What you may not know is that Zometry recently released a update called TeamSpace. Within TeamSpace, not only can I see the orders and quotes that I've made, but also the ones that my team members have. So I've added the team members from Dark Arrow here, and I can see their quotes and their parts that they've ordered. So right here, I have a quote that's been made by Riley. He quoted it and he ordered it, and there's actually these bearing blocks right here. But in addition to just being able to view it, I can also create a copy of that order, and if need be, without having to bug the rest of the team members, I can submit another order. So. If you're part of a company that has multiple team members that are ordering parts through Zometry and you want to consolidate that all to one area and streamline your workflow, highly encourage you to check out TeamSpace. And if you want to learn more, there's a link in the description. Overall, we're pleased with the flap design and the flap actuation mechanism. There are a few things that we want to tweak, like the lockout positions on the flap handle. Those will likely change between now and flight testing. Wrapping up work on the flaps is exciting to us because it represents one of the last major systems to finish up before focusing additional effort on ground testing leading into flight testing. So thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.